sometimes we're not satisfied with how we love people. Mm. You know, we're like, oh, I wish I could love people more, or yeah. I should be loving people more, or I should be more patient, or I should have more self control. Where is my gentleness? Mm-hmm. So, so, what you're doing here is you're trying the fruit that God is growing in you a bit too early. I like that. Hey everyone, hopefully you're doing well. Welcome to the Jesus King podcast. How you doing, buddy? I'm good, man. I love that last episode. It was that, good. That tension of the spirit and the flesh. Yeah. <laughs> yes, so that was part one. If you haven't watched it, please go and watch that. It's walking in the spirit. Uh, but in part two, we're actually speaking about the fruit of the spirit. Mm-hmm. Now, there is... Um, sometimes we kind of skip over it. We mm. think it's the fruits of the spirit, mm-hmm. but the Bible calls it to be a fruit, fruit of the spirit. Mm-hmm. So why would you think that? Right. So thinking about it from pluralistic to singular, like, so we have our nature as being reborn and regenerated in Christ. And then we have the result of that nature, Right. So it's not like results as in, okay, well, I can have love, but I don't need peace or I don't need joy or I don't need self-control, right? They work together because that's the nature of God, right? So the fruit of the Spirit is bringing in our nature, the nature of Christ and the nature of God, right? And conforming us to that nature. And so it's not a, it's not a, a, it's not the desire of God that we display only one of these things is the desire of God that we display all of them because they are one. So consider it like a tree and on that tree you have a fruit and that fruit possesses all the nutrients and vitamins that the human body needs. Okay. Think about it that way. So in the spiritual life, um, especially in the, in displaying the nature and character of God and in, in what um, all of you know, the human race needs from God, you have that fruit, right? And that fruit possesses everything that you need in the, in, in spiritual blessing and in the spirit. Um, that's what spiritual fruit is. So when we talk about love, joy, peace, patience, all the nine, the nine in the list, and we'll read through that, that's all one and one and of the same in themselves. So they're all based in the love of God and the attributes of God and then that flows out into our own life. So we ought to be displaying these things on a daily basis through our lives. We do lack it. We do fail at times. And we talked about that in the first episode, that sometimes we give a bit of influence to the flesh to rise up. But through walking in the Spirit, the result is that these things ought to be a consistent pattern in our life because that was a consistent pattern in the life of Christ. And we are His hands. We are His feet. And we ought to have his mind and selflessly give to to all people. So it starts from God. We have love for him, and then we have love for others. Oh, nice! In in uh, in the first part, we spoke about walking in the spirit, mm-hmm. which is a journey, yeah. right? Um, in this part, we see that um, Paul speaks about that these things of the spirit are a fruit, mm-hmm. and fruit it has its life, right? It has its growth. Mm-hmm. Sometimes people might feel like, well, I'm not loving enough, yeah. or I'm not loving like Christ, yeah. or I'm lacking patience, or I don't feel joy in my life. There's anxieties, there's depressions in my life. Mm-hmm. Um, do I possess the fruit, or yeah. is it in its early stages? Well, what's how would a person be able to navigate where he is concerning the fruits of the spirit? In, in, in saying that, you know, the, the ideal pattern is that we possess all of them for all of time, right? Okay. That's the ideal pattern. We, you know, we want to be like Christ and Christ displayed all of them all the time. Like we said, that sanctification, that sanctifying process, it's a lifelong journey. And so you're not going to be like I am, I would say I am more loving now than when I first came to Christ, right? I display more love now than when I first came to Christ. I display more faith and more joy and more peace now than when I first came to Christ. It's this lifelong journey where through faith and through the leading of the Spirit and through walking in the Spirit, what is the result of sowing in the Spirit is you will reap. You will will have that fruit that comes naturally from it. So 
God is watering all right, through His Word, and He is allowing that growth through our devotion to Him and through our spending time in His presence. All right? As we do that and as we are connected to the body of Christ, these things grow and grow consistently. Uh, I like that example because often many times, like even when I was younger, you would go to a tree that has fruits mm -hmm. and you're like, oh, I want to try it, I want to try it. And then you, you have your parent who will be like, oh, well, it's not ready, it's not ripe yet. Mm -hmm. And, you know, because you don't have the patience and you go try one, you're like, wow, that's yeah, so that's bitter. bitter yeah. uh, so sometimes we're not satisfied with how we love people. Mm. You know, we're like, oh, I wish I could love people more, or yeah. I should be loving people more, or I should be more patient, or I should have more self-control. Where is my gentleness? Mm -hmm. so, so what you're doing here is you're trying the fruit that God is growing in you a bit too early. I like that. Yeah, that's and, good. and that's what sanctification is, mm -hmm. is that as God is working in you, you start to look at the the love that is in you you start to look at the peace that is in you and you start to become more satisfied in that mm -hmm. and the reason why is because it's becoming ripe that's right yeah. and that's so important as christians because when we read verses like that we're like god i want that today mm -hmm. like i want the fruit of the spirit to be ripe in my life i want to be out there being like a mini Jesus, yeah, yeah, which yeah. we all would love that. We all would love We're a microwave to be culture. That. We wanted to microwave. Because that's the one now. Yeah. That's yeah. what it is. Yeah. It's yeah. you're trying to put a tree, or oh, sorry, you're trying to put a seed mm. inside the ground and wake up the next day and, and you're like, wow, yeah, this yeah. is so amazing. I have all this the beautiful <laughs> fruit, right? Yeah, yeah. But the reality is even a seed to come out of the ground yeah, yeah. to see something, sometimes it takes days and weeks, let alone grow into a tree mm -hmm. and start and producing produce fruit. Yeah. fruit. So I believe that even if we are not satisfied with where we are, as long as we are continuing to walk in the Spirit, mm -hmm. we start to see the fruit of the Spirit in our life to become ripened. Yeah it becomes more and more desirable. And the beautiful thing about the fruit of the Spirit is the one of the main reasons people would be attracted to a tree is to taste its fruit. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So when, when you want people to be attracted to you to share with them, because we are the light and the salt, to share with them the gospel, um, the more you become... Uh, you know, mature in the spirit, mm -hmm. the more you start to develop the fruit of the spirit, people will become more desired to come yeah. and speak to you, to come and be around you. Because you're a person they can trust. You're a person who shows kindness. You're showing them the love of God. Mm -hmm. You're displaying to them the very nature of Jesus in dying for them while they were sinners, right? Yeah. And so that's the very mission that's the very objective of christ in allowing these fruits to be displayed while we're on earth because otherwise we'd be saved and god could take us out of the world straight away right? yeah that's that yeah so I, I think it's very important as christians is that god can bring people into your life and you can share the gospel with them you can enjoy beautiful fellowship with them the more they get to see the fruit of the spirit in you what actually pushes people away is things that go against the fruit of the mm -hmm. Spirit. If you're a person that is not full of love but full of hatred, you're pushing people away from you. If you're a person that has no self-control and you have these outbursts of anger, mm -hmm. you're pushing people away from you. So the beauty of it is that having the fruit of the Spirit is invite, being a person who is inviting. Mm -hmm. You can bring people into your life, as Jesus did. Jesus, even when he went on the boat to cross the other side, people are like, where is he going? Yeah, yeah. We want to follow him. Yeah. So that's the beauty of it. But to us, it's different. We're not bringing people to ourselves, mm -hmm. but we're bringing people to where we are to lead them to where Christ we're, is. Yeah, we're bringing them to the, the source of where that fruit is coming from, yeah. right? So a tree in and of itself is nothing but the source of its water and its growth, mm -hmm. right? So water, sun, 
that's where it gets its growth. Yeah. And so when we when people come to taste of that fruit, we're like, hey, guys, do you know how I got to be like this? Plant yourself in this same place where I am, on the foundation Amen. of Christ. Um, and like, I, I kind of, I really, I, I liked the way that you viewed that because there were two analogies that the Apostle Paul used. He uses, you know, like a tree and like a babe. Right, like a baby growing, there's this process in which it gets from this little blob of nothing into a fully grown person. The same thing in a spiritual life. It's like you don't expect that immediately you go from babe to a mature adult who understands the reasoning and understands all things. Right? You go from this little babe in Christ, and through the nurture of the milk, and through that nurture, you grow into something that is greater. And so there is this process, and it should not be rushed. And this is why he also says that it's not for someone who's just come to Christ that they should be leaders and representatives of that message. Right? Mm. There's this process in which, like, slowly, slowly, allow God to to conform you and mold you and shape you, and allow these things to come kind of naturally. As you spend time in His yeah. presence, but we we do um, look at the the presence and dwelling in the presence of God as that source, right? Amen. And as we spend more time with God, we see that the natural result of it comes. Like I, I always read that um, the passage of Moses where he's on the mountain with God. Now God is really really angry at the sin of Israel, right? He says that He is. His anger, because of his righteousness, waxed hot. So that righteousness is part of the fruit of the Spirit, that goodness, right? That righteousness. And then Moses, when he comes down from the mountain, he uses the same word. That when he saw the sin of the people, his anger waxed hot, right? Mm -hmm. The same word, same verb, same everything, right? And so it's like as you spend time in the presence of God, you develop the same mind of God. It, that as righteous as he is, he gives you that righteousness. As loving as he is, that's his attribute. He gives you that love, right? And so you start presenting yourself to people in the same way that God is presenting Himself to them. Amen. And so it's like a really, uh, it's a really beautiful thing that as we spend time, like we we have here, you know, the fruit of the spirit is love. Joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self control. Against such things, there is no law. Right. Amen. Before we get to there is no law, because it connects to part one, mm -hmm. <clears throat> to what we spoke about, you said how God felt was how Moses felt when he came down. Mm -hmm. And sometimes it can be a struggle in us to be producing these mm -hmm. fruits is because the works of the flesh is what na our nature used to be. Yeah. Right. And what we see in the spirit is what God's nature is. Mm -hmm. So the more we get closer to God, the more we are living in his own nature, in his own ways. And we have his own mind, mm -hmm. just like in Corinthians speaks that we have the mind, the mind of, of Christ. Christ. Yeah. So it's very important to that. But now with the works of the flesh, the, the law condemns us because we cannot be justified in the sight of God, which is in Galatians 3. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now we go to the fruit of the Spirit against these such thing. There, there is, is no law. law. Yeah. Yeah. Seems like in the Spirit, there is freedom and we are not under the law. Mm -hmm. So how would you connect both of that? Um, connect it with, I, I usually connect it with Romans chapter 7 and Romans chapter 8, where it's talking about the purpose of the law, right? And the result of the law, if you're not a gener regenerated person, if you're not born again. So what the law does, it is giving us the perfect standard of God. Right, It is telling us this is the perfect standard of God, this is the perfect pattern of God, and then showing us who are not regenerated, we are not born again, we are dead in sin, showing us all the evil of our ways. So it produces in us all this unrighteousness. So the law of God says don't commit adultery. Oh well, yeah, well I'm going to go commit adultery then. Right. So it's just producing all these things and riling up our flesh to you know, in hostility, rebel against God. That's what the Lord does to someone who is not regenerated. That's why when you go and you're preaching the word to someone who's not a believer and you preach them about the goodness and righteousness of God, they're like, man, I'm going to go 
and I'm going to do the very thing that you just told me not to do. Who are yeah. you to tell me what to do, right? <laughs> that's the that's the rebellious nature of the flesh, right? And so in Romans chapter 7, Paul kind of speaks in that term and he says, you know, the mind, even if the mind says, yes, the things that God says is true and it is good, but I don't have the ability to do it. Yeah. Then in Romans chapter 8, it says, but now there is no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus, who live according to the Spirit. Yeah. Right? But And you speaking in chapter 7, I love the beginning because mm-hmm. he gives an analogy of a woman that had her husband die. Mm-hmm. She is free and disconnected from that covenant from that she yeah. had. Yeah. Yeah. So he's saying that, the husband, in a way, is in the, the law. Yeah, yeah. In the right? flesh, we were married to yeah. the law. Yeah. And when Christ came, we have been dead yeah. to the law, yeah. Yeah. and we are connected to Christ. But I love in verse 6, if you want to read verse 1 to 6, to know what we're talking read about. Read all of Romans 7. So yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, in verse 6, he's saying, But now we have been released from the law, having died to that which were what, which we were bound, mm-hmm so that we serve in the newness of spirit and not in the oldness of the letter. So now the reason why we are walking in the spirit and there is no such law against the spirit because what what law would there be of saying, oh, you have too much peace? There's no such law against peace. And also... What happens naturally in the in the fruit of the spirit and in the walking of the spirit, you are naturally fulfilling everything that the law was purposed for, right? So the yeah. law gives you the standard of God, and the spirit uh, like leads you into all of that righteousness, and it's summed up in what loving God and loving your neighbor as you love yourself. Yeah. That's the whole summary of the law, and it's fulfilled in the work of Christ and in the work of Christ in our own lives, right? Through the regenerating of our spirit and through the outward manifestation of that in the fruit. So when you when you are displaying naturally, like, I didn't get it, I have this peace and I'm going through the worst of trials and suffering. How do I have this? Like, how do I have this faith and this peace and this joy in the midst of all? It's because the spirit is working the righteousness that the law could not give to you. Right. Amen. So the the law used to tell you it is good to have peace in God. It is good to have joy in God, but your flesh does not allow you to to walk in that. Yeah. The spirit does, and so we reckon us reckon ourselves dead to the flesh, right? And then that means we are we are divorced. We are separated from our ex husband <laughs> who is yeah. dead, who is the law. Right, because that di- that didn't produce anything good in us. It produced evil and wrath and unrighteousness. Now we are married to Christ in the Spirit, right? And as a as a natural result, He gives to us His nature. We are one with Him, right? If we're one with His Spirit, we have the same nature as that Spirit, right? Yeah, we have the same so, character. <clears throat> so with the with the law, God is displaying His nature, mm-hmm. and He's calling us to live according to His his mm-hmm. ways, his nature, but we're doing it with the old nature. In the New Testament, under Christ, is God is calling us to walk in the Spirit, which is according to his nature, while we are in a new nature. The new nature. So we already have that. That's amazing. Yeah. Last question, because we're getting close to our time. We've only mm-hmm. got like around a minute. Mm-hmm. What would you encourage someone, as your closing statement, someone that feels like the fruit is not ripening up, Mm -hmm. it's not growing, it's still bitter, it's been bitter 10 years ago, maybe it's becoming more bitter. Mm -hmm. They don't feel like they have a progress with love, with peace, with joy, with gentleness, Mm self-control. They don't feel like there is growth. What what would your encouragement be or what would your advice be as a closing statement? You, you don't want to generalize, but we have to because, you know, the question is so broad. Be careful who are you who you are listening to in the world. Um, like early fathers in the church, they, they listened to what Paul said and they said this. They said the world is catechizing. Catechizing means the world is educating you. The wisdom of men, the flesh, your own desires, they are educating you. They are teaching you and training you. We have had many years before we came to Christ 
training in unrighteousness. And so there are all these bad habits and things, and there's this nature that even though the flesh is dead, it's still there and we're still so used to it. But now we've come to Christ and Christ is training you in righteousness. And he's giving you of himself all the blessings of all spiritual blessings. So be careful in your new nature that you are not giving heed and you are not listening to the unrighteousness of the flesh that you were so used to. Dwell in the presence of God. Give your attention to the word of God. Let it dwell richly in you. And that's there's no other formula beside that. As you spend time in God, as you spend time in His Word, as you spend time in the body of Christ as well, in the church, in the gathering, and keep yourself accountable to discipleship, you will see that these things naturally come. And so generally, if you have a person who's been a Christian for 20 years, and they're still as bitter as they were, something's wrong there. Either they're not really truly a believer, right? either you're not truly regenerated and born again, or you have not allowed yourself to grow spiritually as the Corinthian church. They were in that situation. They were still babes when they should have been mature. So be careful where your attention is and when your focus is and where your mind is. If your mind is on the things of the flesh, you will sow that. We're going to talk about that in the third one. We will. Um, Let us know what your opinion is. Please comment and uh, like. And if you feel like there is a topic that you would like us also to discuss, We would love also to hear from you. Um, So, yeah, God bless you. We'll see you for part three. Take care.